It's March and the snow's melting, so it's time to change those wreaths. All right, I'm Donna Dewberry, the original creator of the One Stroke Painting Technique, and I'm in Plaid Studio, ready to continue the series of Let's Paint Wreaths of the Month. And this month, we're gonna do an oval surface, which is different than we've been doing, and we're gonna do grapevine wreaths, we're gonna put in some bright, fresh greenery from the snow melting with lots of pretty blossoms. So let me share a little bit about this oval wreath that we're gonna be using. There's extra holes in this one, so I wanted to share with you, this is vertical, so that that's the one that we're gonna do now, but we're gonna turn it and do horizontal on a wreath on this later in the year. I've got my surface and I'm ready to start painting, so let's go paint March's Wreath of the Month. Thanks for coming in my studio this morning. We're gonna work on March. And so I want you to think about what March means to you. In Florida, it doesn't mean as much except for fresh, bright greenery coming up from the ground with blossoms. But when you are having your snow melt and you start seeing green again with pretty flowers, I bet that's really special to you. And I have to tell you, what I wanted to make sure with this piece is that we have fresh bright green and some darker green, lots of beautiful little blossoms, and I even have a great grapevine wreath in the background, which I know how to make those and they're fun, but there's two parts to this grapevine wreath I'm excited to share with you. So let's go and start painting this project and let me share something wonderful about the surface. And by the way, any of the surfaces, if you want to paint along with me, are on plaidonline.com. And let me share what happens with this birch plywood wonderful wreath shape. This is 17 by 24, a big, long oval. And we have extra hole in here so that you can hang it by the long ways like I'm doing with this wreath, actually. Or you can turn it sideways and put it a lot of other places in your house or on your door and have it as a sign or just a sideways wreath with some flowing flowers that hang down. So this is a raw birch plywood wreath and it needs to be base coated. So you have the wood which is going to suck up the paint really good. So I want you to use one of your folk art multi-surface colors mostly because it's got a sealer for outdoors which will be a perfect to base coat. Use kind of a neutral color so that we can just get a couple of coats of great paint on here and let it dry in between the coats and after the first coat you might feel some of the green that's a little rough so as soon as it dries the first coat, you're gonna fill this. And I want you to take a sanding block, and this is our home decor sanding block, that you can take and knock off some of those um, raised little pieces that you're gonna get and get it all smooth, then put a second coat. Now you could do that with your sponge painter or you can do that with just a household paintbrush, a large paintbrush and put a nice coat on there. So when that's all totally dry, which is what I did before we got here, and I wanted it to be nice and smooth because all the painting's so much easier when you have a prepared, nice surface, okay? The beautiful thing about these um, wreaths and these surfaces for the wreaths is that you can paint both sides and have one for one month and the back side for another month. All right, so we've worked this out to fit on a door really nicely and we want different finishes each month. And the first finish I wanna share with you on here is that we're gonna make it distressed a little bit in the background. So we're gonna use wicker white, multi-surface again. Remember I told you it covers anything indoor and outdoor. I put a little burnt umber, and I even, I'm gonna put a little bit of medium to help this move for me. So this is floating medium, folk art floating medium, and it will just make the paint move a little bit better than if we used water. All right, this sponge was just clean, so it's a little teeny damp, but not, not dipped in water, okay? So I'm gonna take white, and I'm gonna just put a little bit on one side of the sponge. Now this is what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna turn it sideways so I can get to it better, but I'm just gonna go up and down and try to make this as straight as I can get this without it looking curved like this, okay? So just keep picking up paint, maybe a little bit of medium, 
and we're going to work this in. You can see already I'm going to need a little bit more white. All right, now I'm not worried so much about the very, very edges because we're going to put our grapevine there. All right, now this goes on like butter because it's got a nice base coat underneath, all right? All right, now you can see I ran out of white, so let me get a little bit more white here. And remember, I want these straight. Right in here is going to be a lot of the wreath. Okay, so let's get some more white, a little bit of brown, and see the sponge being wide, we can pull it down easily. All right, I just get a little bit of a distressed look. It can look like planks of wood, maybe. All right, my arm's not quite as long there, but you can put this up on the easel and work on it too, but I just like to lay it here on the table like I would do it if I was at home. All right, ready? So I could add a few more streaks a little bit later, but I think that's enough for us to get started. Be sure that you put your sponge away and don't leave it out because you'll wreck these sponges if, it, if the paint dries in it. Now, let's pick up our next colors. Now it's better if you probably let this dry. We already got burn umber. So let's get some Pueblo. And these are the colors I'm actually gonna use in my wreath, the, the burn umber and wicker white. So, <clears throat> so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to continually show you different methods of doing backgrounds so that you can learn a few different fun ways to approach your backgrounds and distressing or faux finishing and make it yours. So pick your favorite or use a few different ones. Now look what's gonna happen here. Right around this edge is going to be my grapevine wreath. And if it had white showing through, it won't look as rich and deep. And, and remember I said you have to have dark, if you've ever heard me teach, you have to have dark to see light. So what I wanna do is I want it a little bit darker. I also want my edges done, and it depends on if you're gonna put another wreath on the back side during the seasons of the year. And then you would have a neutral color kind of. It could just be dark brown or dark green. Okay, so see how I'm slip, slap, slip, slap. This is the movement I'm doing. And it doesn't have to be perfect, all right? So I'm gonna continue to turn it around. Pick up both colors. And look, it's about three or four fingers wide. So it depends on how wide my wreath is. Now, when this wreath, if you're walking up to the door or you're back out at the street walking up to your house, you don't want this wreath too skinny. You don't want it narrow, really narrow, because it won't look like much. So you want a big, good, hefty wreath around here, just like you would be putting a grapevine wreath if you purchased one, all right? So we're going back and forth all the way around and you notice I'm hitting darker on the outside edge now I can add a little bit of medium see it's getting a little dry there so I can add a little bit of medium if I want to just as long as I have a good coverage So this floating medium makes it feel like butter when you're working with the acrylic. It really works it in good. And it's a folk art, so it makes the medium blend well with any of our acrylic paints. Okay. Now we're ready to put our grapevine. Okay, so the grapevine I told you is gonna be burnt umber and wicker white, all right? So I'm gonna move back the, I always like to keep the top of the wreath at the top so I know that I'm gonna have heavier flowers on this side and some of the grapevine is gonna show on this side. So I wanna make sure that I have it really detailed and prettier over here because I know you're gonna see that. So I'm gonna pick up the burnt umber and so I've got too much white there because 
I used the sponge, so I'm gonna get a little bit more bird number. All right, and we don't have to worry about a perfect double load here because if we were, I'd have you in your double loader. We'll just use this up in here. Okay, so now this, let's go to the worksheet a minute because what I wanna show you on this worksheet is that um, this was the slip slap that I did and there's the colors I used. Every detail is on this reusable teaching guide. This is a folk art one stroke reusable teaching guide and it's got a coating on it so you can practice right on here my exact strokes, wipe it off and practice again, even the little speckling that we do, all right? So now what's gonna happen here is I'm gonna practice these vines. These are loose grape vines that I'm gonna practice on here so that and t those are my strokes so you can have my strokes right at home with you and practice it now this is in our wreath of the month kit where we have all 12 wreaths in there for when you're purchasing this you're going to be able to be able to jump in and practice my strokes at home okay now i'm going to wipe this off practice again and you're going to see if you're getting the stroke before you even go to the guide it tells you what size brush, what colors to put on here. And look, I'm just gonna come right around and stroke it. Now, if you haven't done this before, if you're on a dark background, you don't necessarily want dark because it might be a lot darker than, than if I did it right on this wreath, it's gonna, you're not gonna see it much. So whatever follows, the color that follows is gonna be the color that you want in the back that's gonna show on your, on your wreath, okay? So I just keep practicing and wiping it off. Now let me put that down and let's start right down here, all right? So I'm gonna pick it up and every once in a while I might need to get some floating medium, but I'm gonna start here just like I was doing there. See, I told you if we have the white following. Now I have some little curves in here that will make really nice to follow to get the shape of a grapevine loose wreath, okay? So look, I can start here, come out, come out. Now what happens is that every, you don't make a circle and another circle, and another circle. I'm gonna stay right here because this is what I want you to see. I'm gonna start right here and I'm gonna wander out some. Then I'm gonna go away from that and make a Y and wander in here a little bit. And you're gonna keep doing this until we get a nice filled in wreath. Now, I like that this darker color, remember you can't see light till you see dark. So this dark is in here, so when I'm doing my wreath, I'm going to get all that pretty color showing through, all right? And I have gone both ways, so I have some of this wandering little loose grapevine out here. Now watch what happens to the brush when I'm doing this, watch. I have it loose, see how I wave it a little bit? Because that just fills in the area, and then sometimes I do it solid, but see that solid doesn't really have white, so it would help it sometimes to have the white. Now all in here, I wanna make sure there's some on the outside. We get a lot of greenery and a lot of flowers over here. So we just want some to peep through. Does that make sense? All right, so let me, I wanna review with you one more time as we're doing this grapevine that we're picking up. See, I'm picking up three quarter inch flat brush. I'm going to come here and do some loose vines. All right, now I'm slightly lifting the front of this brush and I'm just dragging those last bristles. Now the next thing I want you to think about is that I'm coming off of this because in a grapevine, these are grapevine wreaths, in the grapevine, we're on the grapevine and then we wander off of that grapevine, wander off of it again. So I start on this grapevine and I, there's Y's 
See where it Y's off? Then it Y's off again. So I can come from this side, cross over, this side, cross over, and that's what you're gonna do with your grapevine. Now I can come in here with just dark, and it'll look like a shadow. So I flipped the brush and I led with the lighter color. See, I think that helped it sometimes, doing a little bit of that. All right. I did kind of wander in here, and you could go back to when we're done, if there's parts that really show and you don't feel like you put enough grapevine in there. But see how good this back looks, that color that shows through? It really makes it look richer. And this is pretty fast. Well, this is drying up just a little bit. We need to learn our leaves, okay? So I put a lot of curly cues and all into hanging into the center off of the grapevine because grapevines have tendrils, all right? But what we're going to look at now is I use my greenery as like a map in the back of where my flowers are going to go. And then here's all the flowers we're going to be painting. So I have side views. I have a couple, there's like three different flowers. These are like hanging flowers. These are those five petal flowers that you can make hydrangeas or all kinds of flowers with. And this is a little ruffled petal flower. So let's look at this fern and the long slender leaves, all right? Now I'm going to move over to my double loader. It's all loaded with the colors I'm gonna use for my greenery and even a few flower colors. So let me share with you the colors I use. I have our wicker wide and this is all multi-surface. So we're using our teal and our sap together some and then our, even our, our teal and our happy green sometimes and then our sap green and happy green. And in either of these, leaves, I am sometimes grab some white, so I wanted them all together there. I have floating medium in the middle, so we're ready to use that if we need to. And let's put this over here so that we can practice this a little bit. All of these that I'm using are with a 12 flat. So we're going to get the 12, and sometimes I push harder for these thicker, longer leaves, and sometimes I stay up and don't push so hard, okay? So let's double load. I'm going to get some sap and happy green. And then we're going to come over here and we're going to work it in. Get some more, work it in. We want the brush nice and full of paint. Okay, so this is the first thing I'm going to do is I have this practice spot right here for you to see if the shades the color that you want. Down here is obvious as a darker color. So then I'm going to practice, I turn this this way because sometimes it's easier to start here and push out and sometimes it's easier to pull towards you. Like this one's pulled towards you if you want to. All right, so you can practice that, find what's comfortable for you. Then I'm going to go get some more sap green and maybe even some teal and work that in. And I'm going to come across here, let's do it here. Push down, so you gotta push down first and slide and stand up, all right? Now, most people, where they run into a problem, that's why the double loader's so great, is that you get enough paint, and then as you're coming on here, uh, most people don't, don't push down. The beauty of this is that you can see I need to push down till I cover my teacher stroke and then lift up. And then I'm gonna pull into here with a chisel and get my vein inside my leaf, okay? All right. So now let's look at, I'm gonna wipe this off a little bit and let's get even, we could also get the happy green and the teal and even do, I did some of these fern with that color with that combination. So this is what I like. I like the one center point. I like to pull two sides and then I pull a stem into it. And I like those clusters quite a bit around my, my flowers. But then with, if I'm doing the fern, I do this long skinny stem, which is what I did right here, a long stem. 
And then throughout this wreath, I want to put the one, two, three, and then continue with four. So I touch, it touched the stem, push down, and then stand up. So if you watch when I'm standing up, I push down. When I stand up, if your handle's up, all you have to do is lift and it springs. Push, lift, push, lift. You notice these are all across from each other? And then I pull the stem right in the middle to clean it up again. Now you'll see this is bubbling up a little bit. It's just because of the moisture in the brush. But when it's on your wood surface or your, your painted surface, it's going to not do that. Okay? So keep practicing this till you feel comfortable. And even try it on a note card or something so you can see that you're happy with it. And then, you know, stop the video, start it again, and paint with me again, all right? And I don't want you to feel pressured to rush through this. I want you to enjoy it as you go. I'm going to pick up my pencil, for instance, and I'm going to come here and realize I have a piece of fern that hangs down here, and then maybe another fern here, and then I came up with some fern. But I'm going to do that first, and let's just put one fern on there. I'm going to turn it a little bit so I can reach it for in front of you here. So let's pick up some teal and happy green. All right, now it's easiest to start here on the point. Now I don't have to put the stem because I already have a pencil drawn there. And remember, this is that three leaves in a cluster that I like to do. Now. I'm going to come down the stem and I can get larger each stroke or I can have them all the same because ferns sometimes are the same and sometimes they get larger as they go. Now this is the key. I can now pick up more of the teal and happy green, work it in, but now look what happens here. If I want the dark on the bottom or the dark, dark on the top. I can go all the way down here, making sure the dark's on the bottom. Or it doesn't matter, because I know sometimes it doesn't even, isn't even noticeable, okay? Bigger as I go, more pressure. But look what, this is fun too. Look, I can come right here and cross over on top. And it makes it look like the fern is turning a little bit. Then I get on the chisel and take that all the way, this is your chisel, all the way to hold the fern together. So that's a fern. I can also put another one down here because there's still space showing. And on some of these large ones, you can pull a stem on it if you want to. All right, now that's one fern that I'm gonna put on some of my other pieces. I can also come in here either with sap and happy or till and sap, all right? Now what I'm doing here, same brush, I'm gonna touch, push down really hard, and slide, slide, and slide some really large leaves in the background. So I just want you to think about if you're walking through the forest and or, or in a gardeny area that's got lots of shade, you're gonna see all kinds of greenery. And some are gonna be underneath and darker, and some are gonna be fresh foliage. So look, if I have that, then I can come in here and have fresh. Now all I'm doing is alternating what color I pick up. So this is the happy green with the, the sap and the till that I already had on the brush. Okay? So I'm gonna alternate those and look what happens. I want you to see before I move to another wreath that I have another step out. What I did on here is look what happens when you just put a little bit of white. It just pops the color a little bit more. See this? We can have a little light, fresh greenery.
Now, as you see, I went ahead and added more greenery, so I'm ready for my flowers. So I'm gonna move this up and let's practice on our guide, on our reusable teaching guide, some of the flowers. So I have some simpler flowers and then some that are a little bit more detailed. And it's gonna be kind of fun to see which one that you like the most. And you might even just put one type of flower on here, but I'd like to share them all with you and how easy it is to do. So what I'm starting with on this one, I used the number 12 flat. You can read right here, number 12 flat, wicker white and happy green. Now you can even add a little bit of yellow if you want, but we dotted the center with yellow. So I want you to see that I'm gonna pick up happy green over here and then I'm gonna side load or double load right there and pick up the white. So I'm gonna go like this, work it in, occasionally pick up the happy green and then go back to the wicker white. So really what we're doing is a white blossom. And so I just pick up that, that green, the happy green, just to get shading so it's a little bit more than just a white blossom. And I'm seeing if I like it right here, okay? Now this stroke is easy, but you've got to think this out because we're going to start here and end there. Now listen to my terminology, the way I say it, okay? It's kind of like a mantra. You start here, you push the brush down. So chisel, pressure, guide the white over the top, and let the brush spring up. So it's touch, pressure, and the pressure is that this is what um, many of you tend to do. You tend to go straight on the chisel like a daisy. And so I want you to see that we're not doing that. All right, let me show you that again. I don't know if you can see it as well when it's just white. But I want you to see. It's not touch, pressure, lift. That's like a daisy, all right? So this is real important that you watch this part because it's going to make it really easy for you. You're going to touch here and we're going to go to there. So we touch, touch, lay the side, lay the brush on the side. Touch, side, which is your pressure, guide the white over and slowly let it spring up. Okay, so that's just going to practice that chisel, pressure, chisel. All right, so now I want you to see that this is a gingerbread man. He has a head, two arms, two legs. Now when you lay this out, then it will be so easy to do a five petal flower. So you're gonna touch it here, pressure, lift. Pick up paint, touch, pressure, guide it over the top and lift. I'm gonna go over that one again, not so good. There you go. So that's the first arm. Pressure, second arm. Let's do a leg, and let's do the second leg. All right. Now turn off the turn off the video and just work on those because I'm telling you, as soon as you get that movement, you're going to be so happy because it's a simple movement. Let me show you what it's not. Okay, real quick. Let me show you what it isn't. All right, I'm gonna go right on here really quick for you. All right, so it, I'm gonna touch here and go to there, right? So I touch, pressure, guide it over the top and stand up. What people tend to do is they touch here, they turn the brush all the way around. This is not what we're doing. All right, so we don't touch and turn this brush never turns. This brush is steady in my hand. Pressure, guide it over the top, and stand up, okay? So that's gonna help you do this. Now this is fun, because right here, see right here, I've done like four strokes. I did a head, two arms, one leg. Then I come right here and overlap it. I do a lot of these when I turn this into a hydrangea. But when you're doing multiple flowers and you want to layer some, this is painted one, paint the second one over that, okay? All right, now, now that you learn that stroke, this stroke is a little bit more to it, 
but it's still a simple stroke using the same techniques. So I'm gonna go right here and pick up Moon Yellow and Wicker White on the same brush. And I'm gonna work that in. So Moon Yellow and Wicker White. You're gonna pick it up almost every stroke, all right? So now this one, instead of doing the swoop up over the top, I want you to start on the chisel and do a little bit of a wave and then let it spring up. So sometimes people feel like that one's easier, but it is more detailed. So we're gonna start here and we're gonna do a little bit of a wave and let the brush spring up. You don't have to do anything but lift the pressure. Touch, wiggle, and it stands up. So I'm still saying to myself, there's a head, there's an arm, and here's two legs, one, Two. And you could have them coming either way if it's easier for you to come this way or the other way. All right, so that's how we're going to do and put a little center and you're ready to go. All right, so I'm going to wipe this off and let's add the yellow flowers on first because I use those white flowers as pretty white pops on top of everything when I was all done. Okay. So let's pull this in here. Every time you start, make sure your holes are up top, okay? And I know that might be from experience, okay? And so I want you to come on here and let's start putting out some of these blossoms. So I'm starting up here and I'm gonna pick up the moon yellow and work her white still. And I decided I'm gonna put a couple of them in here. Now look how pretty that pops on that dark surface. Now the moon yellow and some other colors are transparent so you might see through that a little bit but the white helps it not be so transparent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to overlap a little bit. See this? And I'm not doing any of the centers till later. See, I think that's pretty. All right, so now what I want to show you, though, is you could flip this brush and have the moon yellow on the outside. And sometimes that just looks like the same flower, but different variation of color or some's in the shadows and some aren't. Okay, so let's go down here and do a cluster. Now you see I'm spacing it out a little bit because I already know I'm gonna put little white blossoms in between. Now, I want you to see the size of this. This is a little bit more than two fingers wide. Do you see that? A Little bit bigger. So I'm gonna come in here See, sometimes I need to really come in and pick up fresh white. Do you notice that? I'm going to put one more flower, and I want you to see that I want to do some trailing flowers because I went through here a few places and did some trailing flowers. But, I'm, but every time I'm doing a head, two arms, two legs, so continue to think that. All right, now this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to pick up, and I'm going to make three strokes, then I'm going to come here and just do two little bitty strokes, and then chisel, 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 all right? And I might even come back here and add another little piece of one, all right? Now, sometimes I did those. Make sure they look like they're falling and not too rigid. Okay, I'm going to add just a couple in here, and then we're going to go to our next flower. Okay, so now I've got the base of those yellow ruffled flowers. I'm going to move this up because now I have some hanging flowers. I want you to see how all these hanging flowers come in here. See, they're hanging over. So there's definitely a back side, a front side, and little stamens that I want you to learn how to do. And then we're going to come in after that and we put all the little filler white flowers, which made it really yummy. 
and then put some centers, okay? So some flowers, I do the centers all at once as I'm going, and some flowers, I mean, I do in layers as I'm layering them, like these flowers are gonna be, where there's a back and the front, and then all these others, I put them in after I'm all done, all right? Now, I did realize here that I had the trailing flowers, so you can see that you could start at the bottom and trail up. The ones I showed you, I let space in between. So if you wanna do any of these, it's kinda of like a daisy stroke. And if you're stroking this, you're doing one, two, three, and you're layering it upwards so you can overlap it, okay? What we did was stroke one of these and then made space coming down on them. So you can do either kind, and there's probably room for both kinds, all right? Now let's, let's and this is a profile, so you can just do the same flower into a profile, which is just half. But what I've done here is I've done the back profile, put the stems in, and then put the front on top, all right? So let's show you how this happens. In the back, I used a darker color. So I'm taking the same brush and I'm picking up yellow ochre. There we go. A little bit of white and yellow ochre. I always like to come to the side and really work it in. All right, and I made sure that I had the right color. So this is the same petals over here. We're doing a little ruffle, ruffle, ruffle. And I just remember, when, no matter what color the blossom is, it's just darker, because it's in the back. Then I'm gonna take the script liner. This is a two script liner, and all these brushes are my one stroke, folk art one stroke brushes. So I'm gonna take some green this is sap green, and I'm gonna make it kind of inky, so there's a little bit of water in this brush, and then, which is gonna beat up on the guide. Then I'm gonna pull these stamen, stamens down. So see the stamens? Because then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up white and moon yellow, because I want it brighter in front. Now look what happens, I'm just gonna come here and overlap where the stamens are, and these are the front petals that come on top. And then all I do is touch the little stamens on the, the pollen on the edge of these. So these are really fun, let me show you. So I decided at what was easiest is I'm gonna paint, I got some big wreaths here, <laughs> all right, I'm gonna paint these hanging down, all right? So to do that, I decided where you could take chalk and chalk it in so you know where it's going to be or you can kind of do like I'm doing. I came along here and decided I want to have a couple big ones here. So I'm going to do the back petals. All right. So be sure this is the key when you're doing this that right here is where they all attach. So when you do them flat and make it really white, it's gonna look funny. So make sure, design-wise, that they're coming to one spot when you're done. So I'm gonna do another one a little bit lower, and it can go right on top of the fern. Remember, it's all coming to right there. And I'm gonna do one up here, maybe lower, right here. all coming to that spot right there. All right, so I've got one, two, three. I might put one way up here. And that yellow ochre covers pretty well. So I'm putting that in the back. Remember I put the white and the yellow ochre? All right, and then I ended up coming over here and adding a few, because I thought it needed something over here. That's where it's going to. A little bit lower. So this is a whole different flower, if you look at this, than everything else. And these are hanging. All of them are hanging. A little bit more here. And then back here, I actually put some of those I just showed you, where I did one, and then I did two, three, 
and some of those that are just hanging. You can do those in a few locations if you want in your painting, white or yellow, okay? Now, now your second step is, remember, you're gonna put your stamens. Now, they're coming from here and they're hanging. So I come here and I make at least four. So sometimes I let this dry because look, it's picking up that first color. Four or five stamens, but they need to be hanging like they're falling out of there. And I like it better this way. You can always add them afterwards, but if they're underneath there, if they're inside, Especially if you're a newbie, it makes sense. Look, it's hanging, okay? Now, I'm gonna now use the moon yellow, which is a bright yellow, not a dull yellow. So I'm gonna pick up white and the moon yellow, and I want the white edge to be showing. So now this is, so I start at that spot. Remember that spot's where the stem's gonna come? There we go. All right, that's too much paint there. Okay, so it's all coming back to that one spot right here. Moon yellow, a wicker white. All right. Now you'll see what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna take little stems that are gonna hold these blossoms and they're gonna help this pull back to the plant that's growing these pretty little blossoms. Okay, they kinda of look like bells, do you see that? There's the front of the bell. All right, that picked up some green, but it doesn't look bad. It looks like it's supposed to. Okay. All right. Now, to finish that up and to finish up the rest of the flowers, we are going to use our script liner. But I'm going to turn this over so you can see a little bit better because I'm going to be able to pull it easier this way. So I'm going to pick up some, both greens, roll it a little bit. N don't use floating medium. You're gonna use water, because you want this to be thin enough. Roll the brush, and you're gonna grab this little guy right there, and then I wanna see those stems come back. So I grab it, and then I pull the stem back into my flowers. See this? Now over here, it might need to be lighter because it's so dark. So doesn't that look pretty? And over here, it needs to be darker. Here, it's gonna be lighter. Get this little guy here. It's gonna disappear behind here. So I got this one and I need to pull it back. So you're just attaching them all, okay? Okay, now what we're gonna do is I have, well that's drying a little bit, I'm gonna take our burr number and we're gonna do some curly cues. And we're gonna fly spec. Cause I'm just letting the flowers set up a little bit. So to do a curly cue, I'm going into the water three times and look, I'm laying the brush down and I'm making it inky. Now what I'm going to do to make sure it's not too watery is I'm going to roll it out of here and I can tell if it's pasty or if it's too watery or it's just right. Okay, you ready? This is fun. What you're going to do is you're going to hold the brush up to the first knuckle. Excuse my band-aid there. <laughs> we're going to take this and we're going to take our finger and make a circle 
We're gonna come from the center and I'm gonna take and do three M's, reverse, and do a little one, okay? Now grapevines have a lot of these. So I'm gonna come in here and then go around and just put some little ones in here, just little ones coming out. And they can just come just like this, look. If you're not comfortable with the big curls yet, Look, you can come right here and just make it a little curly cue. Or you can do your tendrils where they're all wound. Okay, so this is kind of fun to bring into here. And you can do some curls out on the dark area, but you have to make sure they're a color that's gonna show. So since this is a brown grapevine, I would do them brown, okay? Sometimes I do them green if I've got vines growing. All right, so then I'm just gonna show you while I've got the brown, while I let these set up, before I put my white blossoms, I'm gonna dip my toothbrush into water and not get it too watery, but get the same kind of mixture that we just did. And let's see this. Is it too, that's just, that's pretty good. See that? All right, so what I did was I just dirtied up the middle a little bit. All right, I can go get some more. And I can cap it, so like put paper over it or something to cover so I don't get it on the yellow flowers. But I just wanted to get that little bit aged look on here. And before we put all the centers, we're gonna do those white flowers. All right, remember the plain white flowers that we did? that were white with a little bit of happy green. I'm gonna pick up my happy green and come here and work with my wicker white. Okay, right here. Now what I'm gonna do is do little clusters like they're growing there. Little clusters, a little bit um, smaller than the yellow and that's a little too green, so I can just come over here, pick up a little bit more white. And actually, let me put some more white in here, because I've been using a lot of flower colors here. There we go. So we have some fresh white. So I'm gonna dip this into the white. And, okay, now look how bright this white looks. Now you can use a smaller brush, but I think a 12 is gonna make you happy because we're using happy green and I want you to be happy painting it. Look at that. So by the time you do all these white flowers, you're gonna have this flower down pat because you're gonna do so many of that little um, gingerbread band. Look at that, okay? So I came around here and just added them here and there all over. Now one way, remember, if you've ever, if you've worked with me before or watched any of the other videos so far for the year, which I hope you have, you're gonna do triangles. So there's one, two, and where would the next one go? Three, over here, here's your triangle. Now you can overlap them or you can just have triangles all around and then you decide if you want more so right now i can add another here and that would be a double triangle there's a triangle and there's another one all right so then remember these little clusters there's a side profile profile and then we can come in here and add some little little teeny clusters coming out from here Whenever you do a side profile, you need to pull a stem from it, okay? Now, I kind of skipped around and went wherever I felt like it needed something. So we have some little white ones out here. We got a little too much green again, so just pick up some more white.
Okay, so I finished some of my flowers, but before I put the centers, because I want you to see, um, you can either put all your centers in, let everything dry, and then do this antiquing, but I felt like it needed more antiquing on here. So I just want you to see that I'm taking my painter's sponge and I'm picking up some floating medium and some burn umber. All right, now as I'm coming, I'm just gonna do a little bit here and take you to the finished one. I did a couple of things where I came around this edge and did a little bit darker in here or floated with a floating medium and I just, did a wash of the brown using the medium. If you use anything else, it might grab too much. But remember that this is multi-surface paint, which has a sealer in it. So if I start doing this, and you guys go, I'm scared to do that. If I start doing this and I go, okay, it was too much, I'm not happy. You can wipe off a bunch just like this, okay? Because it doesn't hurt it. I can also come in with my large brush and I can use floating medium, and I'm gonna pick up, and I just went around this edge and shaded it and made it a little deeper around this edge part, and I'm gonna show you that on the finished piece. Okay, now after we floated around here, I wanna come in and put all the final details. Final details on flowers are the centers, and if you put a really pretty center, you can make your flowers amazing, even if your petals aren't perfect. So I'm picking up sap green with my number two script liner. I'm gonna dab in some color inside of those yellow flowers. And then I'm gonna pick up, I'm gonna wipe that off, and I'm gonna pick up thick paint with the number two script liner bristle. And I'm gonna put wicker white and put little dabs of that wicker white and see it really makes a difference if you put detail instead of we do a lot of dip dipping of the handle and just dotting so i think you'll like how this really adds to it now i also use moon yellow and sometimes just put one dip so it's a dip dot you dip into fresh paint don't use old paint not dried out paint and see i can put multi dots of the moon yellow or I could just put one dot of the moon yellow. And I also didn't put anything at the bottom of the stamens. So I just picked up the thick yellow and I added right at the end of each stamen the little bits of yellow to finish up that wreath. Now we finished everything you need to learn to do the March wreath. So wasn't that fun? Doing that two-step grapevine wreath that made it really realistic. And then we added a few leaves and then all those beautiful blossoms to fill that wreath to hang and decorate on your front door all month long. But wait, come back in April to join me for another lesson where we're painting the wreath of the month. Until then, I would love for you to share your photos of your completed wreaths and even hanging them on your door on our Facebook group, Let's Paint with Plaid, so we could all enjoy it. I'll see you next time.